All right, everybody, welcome to the Master Passive Income Show. Today, I'm super excited that we are going to be learning how to use our self-directed 401k IRAs using that so that we can actually have control over everything. Now, as far as terminology, I brought an expert here on the show with me today, Brandon Walsh with Rocket Dollar. Thank you so much for being on here so you could show us how we can use our, our IRAs, our 401ks, and be self-directed so we can control everything rather than having somebody else control us. Thanks, thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Dustin. You know, Master Passive Income is always one of our best partners. So really excited to be on here. Uh, many of our real estate investing customers constantly go to uh, Dustin's website to get educated how to own a single family home, really figure out how that fits inside of the self-directed IRA. And often his uh, people that use his education are consistently some of the best educated customers that come to us. It makes my job really easy as a salesperson. Sometimes people barely ask a question, just a quick one, one or two, and they're off to purchase account and off on their way. Um, so Dustin invited me today uh, to really talk about some really awesome uh, things that you can do with a self-directed IRA. Dustin covers uh, single family home investing backwards and forwards all around on his website, his education, um, his podcast and content. And he said, hey, you know, a lot of my customers, you know, they, they love the real estate, but they've also been asking about other types of asset classes. You know, how does that work in an IRA? Um, so, you know, what we're going to do today here, we're going to talk a little bit about real estate, kind of expand that past the single family home, what you can do with self-directed IRA or solo 401k. And then we're also going to expand into some other asset classes um, like startups, uh, precious metals, cryptocurrency, or even like a private investment fund. What does Rocket Dollar offer? We offer a self-directed traditional IRA, a self-directed Roth IRA, and a self-directed solo 401k. Uh, that that's usually for self-employed individuals and really powerful for some real estate reasons that we'll get into. Uh, we have a few other specialty IRAs, but that's kind of our bread and butter, uh, you know, these three products up here. Um, and, you know, what our motto is, is kind of no taxes. We have a lot of alternative investors that they've explored real estate investing or these other assets, but a lot of times they get killed in taxes in those accounts. Our accounts help you get the same tax breaks that you get in stocks and bonds with real estate precious metals, cryptocurrency, startups, other assets, you know, aggressive assets, and sometimes really safe and yield bearing investments. So Dustin knows one of these really well on here. We've got all the types of assets that someone can do in a self-directed IRA or solo 401k. Top one, one of our biggest uh, uh, asks from customers every day is real estate. Dustin's doing education. That's, that's a whole industry moving um, real estate uh, investments through IRAs and getting that great tax benefit. Um, sometimes I run into real estate people, they call me on the phone and they find out for the first time, Dustin, I don't know if you've ever encountered this, they've never heard of doing uh, real estate investing in an IRA and they're a little bit mad about it. Uh, you know, they've never heard about it. I definitely get that all the time because what people do is they, they realize, hey, I have all this money sitting there and I'm trying to invest someplace else. And I have, you know, just mutual funds or 401ks and IRAs. And they're starting to realize now that they can actually use that. Now, the caveat is you can't touch that money when it comes back in. Like if you make money in your real estate, it goes right back in your 401k. You can't touch it yourself. And so that's the one little caveat. But other than that, man, you save that for retirement instead of having somebody else literally you know, manage everything, you are the one in control, which is what I absolutely love about having a solo 401k or self-directed IRA. And, you know, real when I hear real estate investors, you know, kind of like the one big tool they have, that 1031 exchange, that's like the one thing you can't do in a retirement account. However, there is a world of tax advantages that you can get through these accounts and yet really expand your creative real estate investing. And so we have a lot of investors come to us that just get really excited about what projects they can do in real estate in a self-directed IRA, solo 401k. So uh, some of the other assets that people also don't, don't know you can do is uh, private equity or a hedge fund. Um, you know, this could be a great uh, opportunity, great money manager, but sometimes, you know, maybe they're just not approved at Merrill Lynch yet. Um, you know, Charles Schwab, you know, they'll offer this sometimes to their very top level customers, but some of these investments are really difficult to get. Um, a loan, a debt, a promissory note. This is, um, you know, something people in America do every day, loaning a business or maybe a real estate developer money because they believe in their project. And they think, hey, I can get a nice return. This person needs some capital. Uh, you can actually do that to a specific private business or person through a self-directed IRA. Um, venture capital, um, startups and crowdfunding. 
Um, you know, this is typically obviously not what people think of as a retirement asset, but Rocket Dollar customers um, love that there's a tax advantage. So sometimes they'll take a small portion of their portfolio, put it into a startup or venture capital fund that they believe in. And every time, let's say, if you have a startup blow up, you're getting some very nice tax benefits on that because, you know, you hear about startup employees, startup investors, they finally hit their big break. Then they have a giant tax bill to take care of. Um, very popular with our customers right now, Red Hot. As of uh, this morning, I think Bitcoin was somewhere around 51 or 52. It could obviously be different. Uh, very high flying asset, but uh, Bitcoin and digital assets and cryptocurrencies. This is by far the newest asset, asset that we have. Um, and part of the self-directed IRA is that when a new asset comes onto the market, you do not have to wait for traditional finance to start accepting it to do it in an IRA or solo 401k. So investors have already been doing crypto activity in self-directed IRAs for quite a while. And uh, we've been hoping to try and make that easier through our account structure. Um, precious metals, another one of the kind of foundational things that started self-directed IRAs along with real estate. Big favorite of many uh, gold investors, silver investors. For thousands of years, there has been value in precious metals. Uh, it is still no different right now. So people a lot of find this as a defensive asset, maybe something that moves different than the stock market, um, or just provide some value at a certain time. They think, hey, this is a great time to be in metals, maybe move a little bit from other assets into metals, and they can buy their time and figure out um, you know, what assets they want to enter after that. Um, Farming assets, um, assets in rural towns, um, you know, sometimes investing directly in harvest, crops, livestock. These are things that uh, a lot of Americans, you know, they've never lived in the city, but they're a damn good businessman or woman in their own town. And a lot of it's just frustrating is, you know, Fidelity is in Boston. A lot of financial companies in New York. They're never sometimes going to notice a really good investment opportunity, maybe at a farm next door or a small business in a town near you. So uh, we have some people that, you know, one of the best performing uh, people in 2019 had uh, about 30 cattle in his IRA. Um, he beat almost anyone as far as performance. And that's because he is an expert at cattle and livestock. And who should tell him that he cannot invest in retirement and things that he's very skilled at? Um, at, you know, very, uh, can perform well at, um, international investments, something, you know, you can get international funds, uh, but they're usually extremely broad when you access an international fund or a stock and bond. Um, you know, it's the top five or six companies in another country. <clears throat> so sometimes, uh, again, you have a relative or you, you know, you come, maybe you're an immigrant to the United States, you know, you have assets in your, uh, old country or home country or other countries you visit that are very powerful, that Americans are currently ignoring or don't have any exposure to. Uh, through a self-directed IRA, uh, as long as you're following all the US laws and regulations, you might not get tax shielding in that country, but you can get uh, tax advantages in the United States for your investing. Um, and the last big point and more, uh, with a checkbook IRA, which I'm gonna get into in a minute here, you can access almost any type of investment whether Rocket Dollar has heard about it or not, as long as you're following the IRS rules, um, you can really uh, flex your investment muscles, brainstorm, and say, hey, this is a really creative new investment, but I know it's going to be good for my retirement account. So um, I got a diagram here of the basic self-directed IRA, uh, and this is what's called uh, the checkbook IRA or IRA LLC. Dustin, I know you're you're really familiar with this structure, uh, a lot of master passive income. We use that all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we make sure that we control our assets, which is you buy one rental property, it makes you $250 a month in passive income, but you have expenses that you got to have come in and out. And so that's absolutely what we use that. And all the money stays in our IRA so we can have it for retirement as well. And it goes, it grows tax free. So it's just a, a great way to actually invest your money. I just want to say a little bit about Rocket Dollar. We have a discount code here for master passive income customers. Um, Rocket Dollar, we try to offer this checkbook IRA at a much cheaper price. Sometimes it's up to a third cheaper than some of the competition out there. We try and do it the same way every time, just that IRA, that Colorado LLC in the bank account. Um, you know, I can talk about how you can, if you ever have a question about how that Colorado LLC works in a certain state, feel free to call me and how that would be structured. Um, so for $360 and 15 bucks a month, you get an IRA, an LLC, 
and a bank account relationship with a bank that are a partner that understands real estate and all these different alternative assets. So uh, on the right here, you'll see kind of some of our competitors' fees, uh, you know, which can get pretty long and crazy sometimes. We Rocket Dollar was started because we feel a lot of these fee sheets were too ridiculous, and they're restricting people from being able to invest in alternative assets in their IRAs. So uh, with the Master Passive Income Code, um, you can click Dustin's. Make sure to click his link so he gets credit there on the Master Passive Income site. But for you to get fifty dollars off, you can enter Master Passive Income uh, in the referral code box right before you get to our final purchase at Rocket Dollar. Um, that'll get you fifty dollars off in your account. Um, and hopefully, I'd love if you had a conversation with me and and you know Dustin, all the great education that he has. And so many people, obviously, you'll see a couple um, the three boxes here representing the self-directed IRA. What Rocket Dollar creates for our customers. Many people are used to just a standard IRA, a traditional Roth IRA that they get Fidelity, Schwab, and you know these are great stocks and bond companies, and they've been experts at that to offer a great product for a long time. But some people say, hey, Fidelity, can I get this real estate investment in my IRA? It's, you know, maybe it's a real estate fund or it's a property. And Fidelity is pretty much always going to say no. They just say, hey, this is not our thing. We do well in stocks and bonds. We know our customers do well in stocks and bonds. We're going to kind of stay away. It's like too much compliance for us to help add this investment. It's not that Fidelity is not able to add that investment. Um, you know, someone like Fidelity, these big companies, did do alternative self-directed investing for a lot of their higher level clients. It's just a lot of times it's troublesome for them. They're not structured for it. They, it's a little bit of a time waster because they just say, hey, we're not equipped for this. So go, go somewhere else to go do that type of investment. And um, you know, you'll see the LLC in the bank account here, which I'll get into in just a second. Uh, we have competitors that use the direct custody structure, just like Fidelity, Merrill Lynch, and all these other companies. They are more alternatives friendly. They will let you get into quite a different different alternatives. And Rocket Dollar offers that structure to some customers in a limited fashion. However, when it's a single family home investment right in your backyard, when it is a real estate developer <clears throat> down the street, when it's a private startup that is very strong and promising, but you know maybe they haven't proved themselves to the entire world. You and all your buddies know that that is a great investment. However, a custodian does not. This is where the LLC and the bank account comes in. Uh, you'll hear a lot of terms about this. IRA LLC, checkbook control, referring to the bank account, a checking account that you can write a check, send a wire, uh, send money to an investment. So why, why does Rocket Dollar have a Colorado LLC in a bank account? The Colorado LLC, we put the customer in charge as the manager of their LLC. They get to manage and decide what investments are downstream in their IRA. Uh, whether that's a single family home investment like Dustin, uh, I hear, you know, a hotel investment that I've got in the chart here or a private equity deal. And again, the, again, the pos constant thing I try and drill on the customers, whatever you think is allowed by the IRS, you can do it in a self-directed IRA, with an LLC and a bank account. And, and Dustin, why, you know, with a single family home investment, your expertise, why is that bank account so powerful for a customer to have? Well, because there are so many different types of expenses in your business that would come up that you might need to either have a contractor go out and do some work and you don't want to just get any contractor. You want to have maybe multiple contractors. You can actually have checks go out from you or basically pay out of that account to different contractors instead of having to worry about getting a whole loan or something like that. So it is so much better than getting a big loan. You could actually have a little bits of money coming out at a time. Yeah, and so that this bank account in real estate, it just allows a lot of control over the daily transactions, which some investments don't have many daily transactions. Like sometimes you just send money to a fund and you forget about it for years. A real estate property, you have transactions every month. It's a rent check, bare minimum. You're gonna have at least one a month, a rent check coming in. Uh, if a custodian is processing that and they're also processing contractor checks, repairs, the sink broke, uh, you got to get a new washer dryer, these little things can add up. A bank account inside of an IRA and a checkbook IRA really helps you distribute money as quickly as possible. Your contractor needs to get paid. What if the custodian hasn't paid your contractor yet? They're obviously not going to be happy. They might stop work and say, hey, what's up? I haven't got my pay in two weeks. Um, your rent check. Going back the other way, what if the money comes back from your real estate investment? What if the custodian hasn't processed your rent check yet? And you know, these are complaints we've heard from customers where they tried to deal with more direct real estate. They love the bank account and the LLC 
uh, you know, they say, hey, do I have to do more work? Uh, it, the customers love it. They get to handle all the transactions going back and forth. They get to make sure everyone's paid on time. They get to make sure their IRA is paid on time. Um, and they also don't have to worry about the custodian slowing anything down. Um, so to review here, the really big, three biggest things. What does the LLC and bank account offer? One, more control over your investments. Two, no deal review holdups. If you've got a property and you want to move on it, if you've got an investment that's a little new, you can send money right that day and sign as the LLC manager to approve that investment. Uh, and no per investment fees. This is a really great efficiency that Rocket Dollar has offered. It says, hey, if someone has you know, 40 investments or you know, 15 real estate properties, they still pay the same 15 bucks a month to us. Since they've got an LLC and a bank account, it allows a lot of efficiency to move money in and out very quickly since Rocket Dollar doesn't have to deal with it, since the customer is officiating all those quick transactions when they need to, we don't have to charge every single investment a customer does. You know, just quick reviewing the uh, stuff of an LLC here to really drill down on it. You are the manager of the LLC, not the custodian. Uh, if you have a solo 401k, we'll show that structure in a little bit. You're just the trustee. You're the trustee and you're in charge of those bank accounts. Um, you know, this means that you can select almost any active passive investment and avoid the capital gains on it, and avoid the capital gains on it. I drill this down because often people go through an entire presentation, they love the idea, and they're like, well, I'm still gonna get capital gains in my real estate or cryptocurrency or you know, no capital gains as long as it's in a traditional or a Roth account. You can access alternatives that move differently than the stock market. You, you know, Obviously, our stock market is very volatile. It's mostly been good volatility, but retirees get very nervous around that time seeing all that volatility. Um, and you decide when to send the money. When you see an investment, you get to move. And with that checking account, uh, the checking account almost works like a money market. Think of it like in your stocks, you keep money in your money market. You say, hey, there's a new stock coming out. I really want to jump on it right now. You buy it, and then that money comes out of your money market. Think of that checking account like a money market you can access at almost any time, except it's available for almost any alternative investment. So Dustin, you know, with this single family home investing, you know, why do your customers and you know the people you educate find that so powerful to do in an IRA? For a single family home, it's because as we are having as much control as possible, see, as investors, we want to have options. We want to be able to be proactive. We don't want to just say, you know, give this to somebody and you try to make me money. No, we want our own options to be able to do whatever we want with our money. And so if you have a deal that comes up that needs a little bit of money and then another deal pops up, you don't have to, you know, take a whole lump sum or you don't have to go after somebody else for private money. You have, you can tap into your own solo one 401k or the IRA. You can tap into those to buy properties and also to purchase properties. And all that money goes back in so that when you retire, Retire, you have even more money that is going to be for your retirement. And the biggest thing is like you said it, Brandon, you have independent control over everything. And I personally love not having to depend on anybody. I'd rather do it all myself so that I know I'm going to be getting a good return and actually protecting my assets. Yeah. And so a lot of real estate investors just find power for this. We have realtors come to us all the time. People that have been, uh, in, you know, they already invest in a couple of properties and they and they often find, wow, I have a lot more capital left in my IRA from a couple of different jobs. A lot of people even remark real estate as almost their main job. Their W-2 job is kind of their side thing. Uh, and they, you know, they're working it, but really what is that funding that's kind of funding their little mini real estate empire? And what this does, you, you can't buy the same properties that you own personally. You have to buy fresh or new different properties, but you can go out with the self-directed IRA structure, use the LLC structure, and go invest in properties across the United States or LLCs that own real estate across the United States. Um, using that bank account and kind of with the checkbook control sides we talked about, managing that with the um, uh, money coming out of ACH, wires, checks, paying all those people you need to pay to operate and manage a real estate property. So I'm quickly gonna go over the solo 401k structure here. And the reason why we're talking about it in real estate, it can work for a lot of different assets, but there's a couple of reasons why it's very powerful for real estate. Um, look at all of these different types of properties that you can go after. You can do this in a solo 401k or an IRA, but the solo 401k has a few great tax advantages we'll get into a little bit later. So here I've got uh, vacation properties, local commercial properties, apartment buildings, uh, multifamily, 
office buildings, which uh, hurting a little bit this last year, but has sometimes been a very strong, consistent investment. Single family home properties that Dustin educates people every day. Real estate funds, um, you know, getting exposure from a manager to different real estate funds as a passive investor. Um, hard money lending uh, are doing those promissory notes. Maybe, you know, typically to a real estate investor. You know, again, this real estate comes up again and again. It's a very strong investment inside of a retirement account for many reasons people have valued real estate uh, in the United States. And then an international property. Our customers have properties in Mexico, in India, uh, in Europe, all across uh, all the world where they feel that's a strong property to own. All right. So, you know, <clears throat> Dustin, I have a, a, a common question here. You know, what if your retirement account is too small to buy a single family home property? Uh, you know, how, how often do you run into that question? I get it all the time. And the big reason why is because, you know, not a lot of people have some homes you can see buying for like 50, 60, 70,000, but some homes are 120, 150, $200,000 houses. And you get that question because they're like, well, I don't have enough to just buy it outright. And they're, they're scratching their heads like, how can I actually use it if I can't buy the house outright? Yeah. And so here I have a few options. And then with Dustin talks about, you know, maybe you can get loan or financing for a property, which we'll get into in a second. Oh yeah. So I constantly get this question, um, it, you know, and, and so what do I do? I really want to own a single family property. I like mass income. I want, I want to have a property or two in my, um, but I like real estate. So I say, hey, have you considered doing a promissory note or hard money lending? There are developers, especially in this real estate craze right now, there are developers all across the United States that need capital, need short-term capital. They might be right down the street from you. They might be uh, in a Zoom networking group or meeting for coffee uh, in a mastermind right down the street from you. Um, start networking. Um, if it's in these more Zoom heavy times, uh, start looking at Facebook groups, start looking at who has a, a, a weekly or monthly Zoom meeting. I often find that these mastermind and networking groups, they're a mixed bag. But if you find a great one, you can get catapulted. You'll get great connections. You'll get investment opportunities. You're going to get help on your own deals. You might even get co-investors. Um, you know, two investors can invest in the same real estate project, or two IRAs can also invest in the same real estate project. It is also a lot easier to invest um, with a more business-style partner than uh, maybe a close family member like your spouse. And, and Brendan, I think you also mentioned doing something like a promissory note, which is mm -hmm. terrific. I have so many students that are buying properties, and there's more properties in deals for them than they have money. So they're looking for other investors and a great way to tap into your 401k as opposed to going and get, getting a loan. But you can actually lend your own money to other investors like my students. You can actually lend money to my students, get a great return on it, put the money back into that solo 401k or solo um, uh, the IRA. You can do that and still make money. So there's another way, great way to just get into real estate investing mm -hmm. as a somebody with a promissory note. Yeah, and, and this is one of the most successful ways I see people move from a smaller retirement account up to the ability to buy their own single family home. They usually end up liking both even. You know, they'll, they'll still do a mix of promissory notes, but they'll finally say, hey, I finally got enough returns after doing a few notes to buy my own property inside of my IRA. Um, you, you know, there are real estate crowdfunding platforms um, for smaller investments if you're looking to do micro investments. Um, there's real estate funds um, and REITs. And a, a nice thing with a self-directed IRA is a lot of the REITs out there in the publicly traded markets, they just move the same as stocks and bonds. Uh, it's really frustrating to investors. They get a REIT at TD Ameritrade or Schwab and they're like, hey, I'm investing in real estate. And let's say real estate in a certain area is just killing it. And they see the stock market goes down and their REIT goes down. Why does that happen? I mean, because real estate, um, the, re the traded REIT funds is they're getting traded on the stock market every single day. And they get uh, vulnerable to some of those short-term market fluctuations, which can be really frustrating as an investor. So a self-directed IRA can get you into a private fund or maybe a, um, a real estate investor in your area that has a fund that d totally ignores this stock market short-term movements. Um, typically, from my experience, it's usually going to be a $50,000 minimum. However, always talk to the real estate fund. Uh, form a relationship with them. I've seen plenty of that will decrease their minimum, sometimes as low as $10,000. Uh, and this can be a great way, you know, if you have 50, if you're in a more expensive property state, 
if you have 50, 60, $70,000, which a, a lot of retirement investors do when they get up there, uh, use that to invest in a real estate fund. Maybe when that fund exits in a few years, you're gonna have more capital to buy a property. And the last bit is use a non-recourse loan. Um, Dustin, you talk about this all day long uh, with your students, don't you? Oh, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, and you know, a non-recourse loan basically means it's a little bit different than a traditional mortgage. Um, it is a loan where only the property that you signed the agreement for is at stake. So your personal credit, um, your personal car, personal house, Typically, this is you know signed off of, hey, if I mess up as an investor, the bank can take these assets and that's going to make them whole again. With a non-recourse loan, only the retirement property, only the property inside of your IRA that you signed the agreement for is at stake. So uh, you know some people say, hey, that's a benefit, but also remember, the bank's taking more risk. So they're usually a bit different percentage points. Sometimes they're a few points higher. Um, and you, know, you have to make sure you've really got your ducks in a row when you're asking for a non-recourse loan. If you go to your standard mortgage, mortgage guy or gal, they'll probably say, I'd love to finance that property for you. But you have to be careful and say, hey, this is going to be a non-recourse loan. Is that OK? Uh, not all lending providers will do that. I'm sure Dustin's got contacts with them. Um, our partner bank does these non-recourse loans. Um, and just for perspective, you know, the bank usually likes these to be a little bit more rent ready. They like it to be a little bit less fix me up. Um, they they want to make sure it's like a steady property that you can turn around and start renting very quickly because since they can't uh, rely on your other assets if they have issues, uh, they need to make sure that they feel confident embarking on the beginning of the deal. Dustin, anything more to share about you know your students deal with these non recourse loans every day? So uh, what it really comes down to is with that not having a uh, recourse loan or having a non recourse loan, it really just doesn't put the onus on you and your personal credit and everything that you own, which is great. So usually it just comes with a commercial loan. You would have it in the commercial loan in your LLC and you would have it as non-recourse on yourself. So I personally encourage anybody and everybody to get there. It's not, you can't, don't necessarily start there as a you know beginning investor, jump right into a non-key recourse loan. You're not necessarily able to do that. You possibly can. It's just a lot more hurdles to jump through. But usually with commercial loans, you absolutely want to have a non-recourse loan because they go after that specific asset as opposed to everything else. But yeah, we try as best we can to mitigate taxes. That's why I brought uh, Brandon on here because with Rocket Dollar, we mitigate so many taxes, just like in regular investing, 1031 exchange. We have tax benefits by running a business. Um, we have so many great reasons or ways to get and mitigate taxes. This Rocket Dollar is just another fantastic way to make sure that you're making money and spending less in taxes. Yeah. And, and yeah, and that's uh, Dustin's mentioning the taxes here. I have a little note here about the solo 401k, kind of the secret weapon is that a non recourse loan can possibly bring some taxes in a self directed IRA. So you have to be careful uh, to kind of do your research, maybe visit with a CPA. Rocket Dollar has a CPA. We can refer anyone that knows this stuff backwards and forwards. Because uh, there's a certain tax called UBIT and UDFI. And I say it's something to be aware of, not afraid of. Um, it's a tax made uh, because the government wanted to make sure that you couldn't hide too much business activity inside of a charity or a retirement account. So these taxes are kind of old school and they're a little bit high. You have to make sure you're able to write them off if you do it inside of self-directed IRA. So a non-recourse loan should not be taken lightly, uh, it, but it is a great tool, a great weapon to expand your IRA, get it out to um, a higher level asset, maybe a higher level property home, um, which can really work out for you in the long term. And it absolutely must be said that Brendan and I, are, we're not accountants, we're not lawyers. So definitely check with them. We're just relaying information that we've been told by our accountants and our lawyers. So when you're doing your own due diligence, they're going to help you. Your own accountants and lawyers will give you the best direction. We're just helping you out getting there so you know the right questions to ask. Yeah. And, and I have a lot of people say, hey, uh, I'm in California. There's no chance I can ever get a property without a huge loan. Um, have you considered a property in Ohio or Michigan? Uh, you know, I talked to investors in Florida, Ohio, Michigan, that it's really funny to hear the very difference in uh, how achievable it is to buy a certain rental property in different states. Um, just consider something. Maybe it's really tough to buy your first property in cash, which is usually your first adventure in a self-directed IRA. It's a little easier to buy it in cash than to get a uh, non-recourse loan. So maybe think outside the box. I know Dustin does education. What if the property is in another state? Um, there's ways to get over that hurdle and that feeling to really get a strong property um, even if it's just a little bit outside of your uh, local wheelhouse. 
Well, that's absolutely something we love to do here at Master Passive Income is find out-of-state properties because not everybody lives in a good investing area. When I got started, I lived in California in 2006. I wanted to start investing. Well, the prices were just going up and up and up. I Just like you said, Brendan, I actually started in Ohio. My first property was in Ohio then, bought more properties then branched out to Texas and Arizona. And I have students literally investing all over the country. I found that the Midwest down in the Southeast still has some really, really inexpensive homes that you can make at least $250 a month in passive income. And that $250 a month in passive income will go right back into your solo 401k or IRA and continue to grow that so you can even buy more and more properties. Yeah, and, and uh, just a great little story. We had someone that they worked with their grandma to buy uh, a real estate property in her uh, one of her IRAs. She uses that monthly income to live off of. Every single month, a rent check comes in uh, from that property. And you know, her being older, her expenses are lower. That basically pays for all of her basic expenses. And this is a really great way to get some really steady yield um, coming through. Um, and you know, the reason I have the solo 401k mentioned here, you know, Dustin kind of mentioned about taxes and the loans, you know, how much space do you have in your uh inside of your IRA is that a solo 401k is UDFI tax exempt. So unrealized debt finance income. Um, you know, Congress has just left this in there from one of the rules many years ago. Uh, so one of the, what does that mean for you? If you're self-employed and you're a real estate investor, if you get a solo 401k, one of the biggest types of UBIT, not all UBIT, but one of the most common types of UBIT that real estate investors run through all the time when they take out loans in their retirement accounts, like non-recourse loans, the solo 401k is totally exempt. So that is a great advantage to say, hey, I need to extend my capital. I need to go after a big property. I'm going to need a loan. Uh, I want to invest in a lot of real estate that maybe has debt or has uh, loans out inside my retirement account. You should heavily consider to go through the solo 401k. If you have any self-employment as you, your spouse, think outside the box. You probably you might already have a small business. You're just not calling it effectively running income through it as a small business. So this is something to talk to your CPA about saying, hey, uh, I have a side gig, I get paid a little bit, can I turn that into a sole proprietorship or a little LLC or S Corp? Uh, Cause then you get access to a solo 401k and you'll also get access to that UDFI tax exemption. And again, like Dustin is saying, uh, you know, these investments, uh, what's with hit with UBIT and UDFI and what's not, um, it does vary. Usually if you're passive investing, you're a little bit more shielded from that, but active investors do have to worry about this. So talk to your CPA, check in your investments, make sure before you dive completely into an investment, you're checking out what that potential uh, financing or tax uh, liability from UBIT could be. Um, and with that solo 401k, you know, you're getting that same ability to invest with a bank wire, checkbook, um, or debit card. Dustin, thanks so much for bringing me on here today. Uh, it's been really great to talk about real estate, self-directed IRAs, and all these different types of other assets. Yeah, Brandon, I, I definitely learned a lot, and I know everybody else is. And so for everybody, definitely click on the link in the description, masterpassiveincome.com forward slash rock a dollar. But make sure you use that promo code, Master Passive Income. It's all word, one word, so that you can get that discount. But yeah, Brandon, it's been great. Thank you so much for giving us so much great information. Hopefully, a lot of people will be able to save money on their taxes, mitigate all those taxes, because... Uncle Sam's going to take their portion, and we try our best to not let that happen within the laws, and Rocket Dollar does a great job. So thank you very much, Brendan. Thank you, Dustin, uh, and have a great day, everyone. Appreciate it.